Hello, Basket News fans, friends and followers. Uh, we are here once again from Cyprus, Nicosia, beautiful island of Cyprus, actually. And uh, I'm very happy to have a very nice guy. Uh, our actually former neighbor back in Konas, uh, yep. uh, Thomas used to live uh, next to our small office. Uh, so Thomas, so nice to have you here. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. Really happy to uh, be talking to you, uh, Lithuanian. Uh, it's been a while, so uh, yeah, I'm happy uh, you asked me to do this. So how's your summer been going on so far? Summer was great, you know, to be home for two months, uh, just seeing friends, family, it's pretty hectic. Uh, you know, pretty much every day in the morning I am training, uh, you know, up until like noon. And then for the rest of the day I'm seeing friends, I'm seeing family. It's, you know, with only two months, you really have to like make a schedule and kind of plan it out. So, uh, but it was a, a heck of a summer. It was, it was a lot of fun. So no days off? Every day you train? Uh, Monday through Friday I'm training and then uh, Saturday, Sunday, nothing. Is it basketball only or do you try to do other stuff, other sports during the summer? Um, no, um, basketball only, you know, of course I'm weightlifting and whatnot, but uh, basketball, you know, it's such a perfectionist game that if you're not working over the summer, you know, you fall behind, you know, you have to constantly fine tune skills and add things to your game. So um, it's kind of what the summer is used for for me. Was there something specific that you worked on during the summer? You know, shooting for me is always something I'm working on. Um, shooting spot ups, but also shooting on the move, shooting off the dribble, uh, expanding uh, three point shooting. Uh, just because as a guard, especially now, it's a crucial, crucial part of the game. You know, even for bigs, everybody is shooting, but for a guard, it's an absolute must, you know. So uh, just trying to expand, expand my shooting and then also ball handling for me as a, as a point guard. I'm obviously always handling the ball. So uh, those two things are always uh, pretty high up on my list. Last year, year and a half was hectic throughout the world, you know, mm -hmm. with COVID and so on. How is now life in Texas? Do you have, did you have time to enjoy, you know, each other? Friends, uh, family, yeah. and so on. You know, in Texas right now, you don't even have to uh, wear a mask. You know, it's completely uh, open, you know, fans everywhere. No cap on uh, how many people are allowed in the games or at events, anything. So that was really, really nice. Um, and uh, to be able to enjoy life again is, is something that's special. Actually, yesterday, while I was at the game, that you played and uh, before that, you know, seeing fans being back in the stands and yeah. being that much of them at yeah. this kind of uh, the season. You know, I remember last year uh, in September, there was much more uh, negativity. You know, there yes. was not so much positivity as it is right now. It's not perfect yet and mm -hmm. it's not going to be perfect for some time, I guess. But just the level of positivity is quite higher compared to last year. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, even just having some fans in the in the arenas is very different. You know, it makes it feel like there's a ton of fans, you know. So that very first game when it is sold out, I don't know if it will be this year, next year, five years, whatever. Whenever that does happen again, it's going to be an absolutely surreal feeling. And, uh, you know, I'm excited for it. Yes, yeah, like last season, uh, you got so used to playing in those empty gyms. Completely. Empty. That once, like, a couple of hundreds fans come yep. in and you say, Oh my God, that's what basketball is about, right? Man, it was, <laughs> I, I can remember even in the uh, Jagaras Arena when they uh, just piped in noise one time, yeah. it really felt like there was a ton of people there and it was just hearing something else other than the chatter on the court was, uh, you know, it really got you going. Yeah. I saw you meet Marius uh, the other day. Uh, obviously, back in Jalgiris uh, throughout those three years, uh, you got to meet not only uh, many teammates, mm -hmm. uh, but I guess you got to make lots of friends, right? Yes, absolutely. Marius is one of them. Uh, yeah. I guess you are still texting with some of the guys, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm super close with uh, a lot of those guys. I mean, Marius, Yankee, Malagnas. I mean, th those guys are really lifelong friends. Um, yeah. And uh, I think just in general from Lithuania, the thing I, I'd miss most would be the people there. You know, I, I got so close to the guys in the locker room, um, but even people outside of, of basketball, it was, there was friends I had and, uh, you know, there was just great memories, great relationships built. And, you know, that's what it's all about. We also talked before starting the 
a video about Aaron White, you know, mm -hmm. that gruesome injury yesterday. And also when you go a guy, when you when you know the guy, when you know how great he is, you know, and see him suffer a injury like that, it just it just pains your heart as well. Yeah, it does. And uh, you know, I, I texted him and uh, I just thought I'm praying for you, man. It's all you know, it's all I can do and um uh, I was really happy to know he was in good spirits, but uh, I, I really hated to see that. But uh, he's a resilient guy. I know he'll come back from it. Overall, uh, throughout your experience here in, in Europe, uh, what surprised you the most? What, what expectations did you come in and uh, what expectations were met? What expectations, what you did not expect and you found it here? Hmm. A couple, the quality of the basketball. You know, uh, it was very, very good. I can remember my expectations were, you know, not high going into my very first practice in Ludwigsburg, you know, in Germany. I thought I was, you know, uh, going to be playing a mate, you know, and there's just so many things that go like the physicality as uh, another thing that surprised me. So the, the physical, uh, sorry, the physicality and the skill level to me. Um, and just the quality of how guys share the ball and play. It's, it's, it's fun to play European basketball to me. What about people? Did you have any stereotypes before coming to Europe? Maybe what the people going to be look like? Um, no, I didn't. I'm not really a closed-minded guy either. You know, I was just kind of open to meeting whoever and... Uh, kind of letting them make the first impression in, instead of me, uh, you know, cultivating it in my head. Yeah. Uh, I've read in a couple of your interviews or podcasts, you mentioned that uh, several, uh, several times uh, that uh, during your first season in Jalgiris, midway uh, through your, your season in Jalgiris, you said that uh, at that moment you were thinking that you're going to be cut because mm -hmm. you were not uh, finding your spot uh, on the team, on the, on the EuroLeague level. Uh, to say that you've come a long way since then is quite, a, quite an yeah. understatement, right? Because uh, yeah. compared to that Thomas Walkup and this Thomas Walkup, sure. it's like, wow. Yeah, you know, there was that first EuroLeague season, you know, when you talked about things that surprised me in Europe, that first EuroLeague season blew me away. I mean, the speed, the physicality, the size, everything was way over my head. And uh, I think that had me on my heels so much. Uh, but then, you know, like everything, you kind of get used to it. You get used to the speed, you get used to the side, you get used to the players you're playing against. Um, and then, you know, I gained some confidence and, and now I'm just kind of settled in. I, I feel very comfortable. Um, so, yeah, it's <laughs> interesting to think about. You know, uh, I was telling somebody the other day about that time and I was like, man, if that goes worse for me than the, who knows if I'm even playing basketball still. You're, you're for sure never touched the EuroLeague level. So um, I'm just lucky that the timing went, went so well and, and I'm here now. You're starting your fourth season in EuroLeague. You can call yourself, yourself a veteran right now, I guess. Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, I think more so it's kind of how I conduct myself and the experience of, of the players. You know, I know everybody I'm playing against. And uh, especially in EuroLeague, the players are so good that you can't let them do what they want to do, you know, most. And so just taking away that first strength um, is super, super important. And so I think that's kind of the, a, a huge part of being a, a veteran. We still read some stories, you know, and hear those stories from young Americans who don't know anything about European basketball. Mm -hmm and they chase that NBA dream and think that if they do not make it to the NBA, that's over for them. Yeah. Do you still get some kind of, uh, you know, advice seekers from, from a guys like that, you know, trying to get knowledge about European basketball? Yeah, definitely. I think the biggest one I get is from rookies coming out saying, I don't know if I should play a year in the D-League or, uh, or come straight over to Europe or this two-way contract, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, for me, it's easy to say come over here because it's worked out for me. For a lot of guys, you know, uh, maybe their game is better suited for the NBA, you know? So it's definitely, uh, there's a bad stereotype that all European basketball is bad because there's a couple of bad stories, you know, but uh, it's obviously not the case. And um, I try and tell people that whenever they ask. Okay. Uh, over the summer, you made a big move, big decision in your career. You mm -hmm. Uh, closed the chapter with Jalgiris, moved to 
Olympiakos. Uh, can you talk about this decision a bit? Uh, what was the main reasons behind that? Yeah, you know, it was a very difficult decision. Um, I can remember walking out of uh, Monty Yunus's office and uh, after I told him and I was, uh, you know, I was uh, feeling emotional. You know, this was, a, this was not easy uh, to move on from that. Um, but yeah, it was just kind of a gut feeling, you know, kind of what I thought was best for my career. Um, it has nothing to do with, you know, anything that Zhao Gittes, you know, is or, or my experience there. It's only positive thoughts that I have, but um, I just felt like it was uh, uh, a good fit for me here and, uh, you know, a good city, a, a whole bunch of positives that I thought were working in my direction. Um, so, yeah, I went for it. I took a risk and I went for it. So how far, how so far is going for you here in Athens? I love it. I love it here. Um, you know, it's, of course, it's everything is completely new. You know, going back to Jagadis in my third year, it was like I felt like I was coming home, you know, like I'm returning to the same apartment. I know everything where, you know, it's at. Everybody is familiar. Here it's, you know, everything is completely new. So um, I'm still learning my favorite spots. Uh, I still need a sushi spot. Shout out to Sushi Masters. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, so I, I'm learning everything new, but, I, but I'm loving it so far. Sushi Masters has to have some you no know, deal with basketball players in Kaunas <laughs> because they get so much free advertising. Yeah, that's yeah. That's, that's great for them, I guess. You know, yeah, it is. <laughs> But you know, they do such amazing work. And uh, my buddy asked me at the end of year three, my buddy asked, man, how much money have you spent there? And I, we started to do some loose calculations and I thought, man, we should have a sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, you know, they're, they're great. They're great. Athens is huge, right? Uh, it's a huge, huge city. Uh, lots of uh, things to do, lots mm. of places to eat and so on. Sure. Did you just have a chance just to scratch just a bit of that big city? Yeah, you know, the other day we had an off day and I was like, you know, I'm going to just go into the city, kind of uh, just check it, just walk around. I had a few, a few spots I was going to go to and uh, I just could get lost in there for hours, you know, for days really. I, I just started walking around and As I'm walking to my next destination, I'm stopping in at three or four different places and, and there's so much to see. It's a beautiful city. Um, you know, I don't know how long I'll stay here, but I'm sure at the end of my time, I still won't have you know, done everything that I, that I could have done in the city. Yeah. Last year, uh, you literally stole a victory from Olympiakos. Uh, back in Chalgiri Arena, you made that game-winning basket. Uh, was this story uh, kind of a talking point once you came to Olympia Cost? Yeah, you know, uh, before I signed here, everybody was saying, uh, this is a foul, this is a foul. And then I signed and everybody said, oh, it was a great play, that was a great play, you know? Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a, a flipped opinion on that play, yeah. you know? So I think the only person that thinks that's still a foul is Lucas. Okay, I wanted to ask about him, <laughs> yeah, because he was the one who got stolen, right? Yeah. So he still says that it's a foul. Yeah, you know, that was whenever I first walked in the locker room, somebody asked me, uh, they didn't even put any context around it. They said, uh, was this a foul or was, or was it not? And of course, I knew exactly what they were talking about. Uh, but now it's something that we just, uh, you know, joke about, but uh, never had a serious conversation. Ah, oh, this was, this wasn't. And yeah, it's just a joke now. Yeah. I only saw one your game last night. Uh, You started, you played alongside Lucas, uh, you shared both point guard duties with him, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes playing off the ball, sometimes handling the ball. Uh, is this uh, the type of you know, role you will have uh, throughout the season? Yeah, you know, I think this is, uh, our games are different, um, obviously, um, but we both can play the one, we both can play the two, so... Um, I think this is how we want to play with multiple ball handlers, um, but then also I can take the defensive pressure off of him. Um, I can guard the one or guard the two, whichever one you know suits suits the team better. Um, but then to have two playmakers on the court, and then you know if it's just him or just me, I think this is kind of a, the versatility that makes for a good team. You know, uh, having multiple point guards that can both play together or apart is is uh, to me a strength for the team. You beat Zenit heavily, a very good Zenit team yesterday. Mm. Uh, and 
Olympiakos kind of surprised me. You know, I never tried to uh, make uh, great assumptions out of one sure. game because it's not, it's too small of a sample, you know, sure. to, to judge. But that game, it surprised me with uh, how versatile the team is, how athletic it mm -hmm. is, uh, how how great it moves on the court. Uh, how how happy are you with the team's performance so far? It's been really good. I, I've been really surprised with how well we're moving the ball early in the season. You know, usually, especially in the preseason, you know, uh, moving the ball from side to side and flow is something that just usually is non-existent you know everything's kind of seems herky-jerky and it's uh it's, it, it kind of seems like good offense and good shots are kind of few and far in between but you know pretty much since day one um it's been easy to kind of be integrated into the system of the ball moving side to side and it's very free flowing um, you know, so our coaching staff did a great job with, you know, explaining that from day one, this is how we want to play. And, uh, and then also there's quite a few returners on the team. So I'm one of the few new guys and, uh, you know, so they've played together for, for a year already. And, and, uh, so yeah, I think I've been impressed with our, with our ball movement. Kostas Lukas that we talked about is one of European basketball legends, basically. Mm -hmm. Uh, was there something that you have learned from him already? Uh, oh, it has been short yeah. time, but. Absolutely. You know, he's one of the guys I talk to most. Uh, you know, I've like he, we talked about playing already three, four years of EuroLeague. Uh, you know, I've learned some stuff, but you look at a guy like him, he's been playing for what, 12, 12 years, something like that. I mean, the amount of knowledge that he's gained is far superior to mine. So I'm learning from him, asking him questions. Um, and then also, you know, he's been here for a year, like I said, so getting him to kind of give me tips and keys into the system uh, is, is important to me. And I'm, I'm really happy that he's, you know, open and, and receptive to that. Coach Brzokas is a EuroLeague champion with Olympia Kos. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your impression about him so far? He's been great. You know, uh, you never know what it's going to be like coming to a new place, new team, new coach, everything. Um, but he made it clear what my role was going to be and uh, um, it's been great. You know, it, I, I feel very comfortable. And for a first year for a coach to kind of help you feel that comfort and, and make it very clear what he wants and how he wants it, not just him, but the entire coaching staff, I've, I've uh, you know, been really, really happy with and uh, I, hope, I hope they're happy as well. You had two very different coaches so far in EuroLeague and just Kavjus and Martin Schiller. Yeah. Uh, Barzokas, where does he fit between these two? Um, you know, it's different. He's, uh, I don't know. He's not really like either one of them. You know, it's, it's, uh, very different. He's, he's quieter than, than both of those two. But then also when he has something to say, it's very clear, you know? So, um, I don't know. That's a difficult question because, uh, at, you know, there's so many things. There's personality, there's coaching style. There's all of these things that go into it. Yeah. Just before the video started, we also talked about, you know, different metric systems. That's one thing. Uh, another thing is that Greek alphabet is completely different from the Latin. Yes. How are you getting used to that? Uh, I'm trying to learn. Uh, it's, it's a shame to say I'm trying to learn because uh, my effort has not been great. But just to learn kind of some of the symbols and letters, everything. Um, so it's easier to understand some signs and kind of uh, just scratch the surface so I don't feel like a lost puppy all the time. Um, to try and learn Greek would be a, a little too much, I think. I'm not Nigel Hayes out here. I wanted to ask you yeah, if, uh, if he could do that. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and, you know, if he wanted to, he could learn it. You know, he just has a knack for this and uh, he's good at it. So if he wanted to, easy, easy for him. He could do it in uh, a month and... Uh, for sure, it's easy. Uh, but for me, I don't have this knack. So. Yeah. Have you seen your name written in Greek letters? Um, I don't think I have, actually. Yeah, because, for example, yesterday's uh, stats after the game, you know, when you read the names, mm -hmm. uh, all the Greek players are written in Greek letters and foreigners are written in Latin yeah. letters. So that's, that's <laughs> the first for me. I haven't seen you know, a protocol like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I've never seen that either. But uh, I'm glad it wasn't written in Greek because I wouldn't know which one I am. <laughs> you keep uh, playing in countries which has, you know, that us 
as you walk up, you, you will yes. walk up us, right? Yes, because exactly. that's, that's how we say, you know? Yeah. Greeks has the same thing, right? Yeah. You know, uh, it's funny. My grandparents and parents would watch games, you know, in, in LKL where there's only uh, Lithuanian commentary. Yeah. And they wouldn't know anything that was going on. And they would hear walk up us and they would say, ah, we, know, we know that one. We know that one. <laughs> Some guys get offended, you know, think that, oh, that's kind of stupid. I don't know. That's 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 our no. thing and that's how we used no, to. You know? <laughs> as, as a foreigner in countries, you really have to adapt. You know, if you can't uh, expect to come into a new country and expect uh, everybody to, you know, do things your way. You know, you're in their country. So I think that's a little silly. Okay, great. Thank you. That was Thomas Wokup. His name is very Lithuanian, very Greek, I guess, as well. <laughs> yeah, I guess. So nice to see you around. Uh, I guess we'll see you throughout the season as well. Yes, you betcha. Thank you so much. Thanks.